So we've been called to be architects of the future, and what I want to share with you is what I've learned in a journey, a personal journey, in the last 10 years, which is before you can architect anything in the outside world, you first have to architect your own body to be a healthy, a long-living body that can be part of our society. Now, I learned this the hard way. I was 20 years in the Midwest until about uh, 2000. And I lived like a normal American. I have to say my favorite special treat was deep fried donuts covered with sugar. And as uh, for many Americans, uh, what you see there is the way I looked uh, when I got through my 40s and I got here to San Diego. I looked around and all of these fit people who were health conscious were everywhere. In the Midwest, I looked just like everybody else. And I thought, oh no, if I don't get with the program, they're going to send me back. <laughs> so I spent 10 years diving into what makes me, what makes you, the person you are. Now, as I did that, I found out that I was a part of a national and now global phenomenon called the obesity epidemic. And here's our country as it looked like just 15 years ago. And those colors are the percent of the population that's obese. And you can see that in 95, which was already 15 years into the beginnings of this epidemic, there were uh, upwards of 20% in some states that were obese. And yet now, there's no states that have only 20% of their population obese. And in fact, the Center for Disease Control says that by 2030, when you're 30 years old, there will be a dozen states that are 60% of their population obese. Now, this is a public health emergency, probably one of the most important in the history of this country. And, you know, I tried to understand, I've been a scientist all my life, but I'd never turned my brain on my insides. I'd I knew more about the surface of Mars than I knew about the inside of my own body. Now, what's that about? I mean, how is it that you, as very intelligent high school kids, can get to this point and not have a detailed knowledge of the insides of you and how your body works? There's something really wrong going on here. And when I looked at this, I said, this has been going on for 40 years. What is happening? There must be something in the water, right? There, there's something in the environment. What could be so universal? And the answer is, what you eat and drink. Because as I began to just get 101 about your body's biochemistry, you learned that food is made of proteins and carbohydrates and fat. But only carbohydrates and what we call fast carbohydrates make you fat. And yet, uh, we eat them all the time. And so I began to realize there was something very wrong here. Sugar, in particular, has no nutritional value. All it does is spike what's called your glucose insulin system, which is the system that ultimately determines whether you take food and it goes in your fat cells or you burn that food and, and make energy. I said, okay, but if sugar is bad for you. In fact, as our doctors are beginning to call it toxic sugar, 
what, what is it about our culture that when we have Halloween, the idea is to get as big a bag of candy as I can. What are you training the kids to do? On Valentine's Day, you give your sweetheart candy. What's that about? Right? I mean, there's something going on here. We are, we are basically trapped in a culture that is trying to sell us things that ruin our bodies. And you know, when people are advertising, they're after your money. They're not your friends. They're not telling you the truth. They're just trying to keep you addicted to a substance that this world makes a huge amount of money off of. And I found that, um, you know, as I, I got into this, I said, am I crazy or is the world crazy? And I decided to take a chance that maybe I wasn't crazy. And I started reading and I started learning about uh, what your biochemistry is and, and, and what you find is your body is a very special thing that if you put in the right things, you're healthy. If you put in the wrong things, you're not. I mean, like you wouldn't put water in your gas tank because gasoline is too expensive. It would ruin the car, you know that. But you put stuff in your body all the time that ruins you. And when, you know, the thing that really gets me angry is where in this space of 40 years of this, where are the public health officials? They're supposed to protect us from things like that. They're supposed to put regulation in place like they did with smoking. Where are they? And when finally the mayor of New York decides to outlaw giant sugar drinks, or the first lady takes inner city kids and teaches them for the first time how to have fresh vegetables, what happens in our culture? It's controversial. There are a lot of people saying, you know, what are you doing? So I realized you have to learn to think for yourself. Now, it got worse. You know, it isn't just sugar. It's anything that's, that, that, that like refined flour, starch, I hate to say it, potatoes, a.k.a. french fries. That's before they fried them in trans fat. Um, and yet, if you look at what the U.S. Department of Agriculture in 95 put out as the food pyramid, look at the bottom of it. It's nothing but fast carbs. And they want you to have two-thirds of your calories from that. And then the result of that national experiment, well, you just saw the map. And yet, this is from the United States government. So, you know, you go into grocery store, the whole center of the grocery store, you don't want to eat that. You take high fructose corn syrup, it's gotten so cheap because of the government subsidies to corn, it's run sugar out of town and it's an all processed food. In 1970, the average American ate one pound of high fructose corn syrup. Today, it's 50 to 60 pounds each of you consume in prepared foods. And so, We've got to change. We've got to wake up and realize there are alternatives. This is, for instance, the low carb. And I'll have books in a salon to show you more about this, but this protein. Now, if you're a vegetarian, that's fine, but you've got to make sure that you have plenty of protein, good fats, and then if you're going to have carbs, make them fibrous vegetables, a little fruit, and by the way, never drink your fruit. It makes it super sweet, gets rid of the fiber, eat your fruit. So there's little lessons like that that can make a huge difference. Now, things are easier today than they were when I was uh, your age, vastly. You all have smartphones. There's this a giant uh, burst of activity in the market creating uh, sensors that can couple to your smartphones that can uh, help you keep track of your exercise. You know, exercise is so important as well. You can't lose weight just by exercising. 80% of losing weight is changing your diet. But the exercise is critical to then tone your body and to uh, lower your future risk of heart disease. All of these things are possible. Sleep, you can, these are all devices I use. I just used the Zio last night on my sleep. I've got a Fitbit on measuring my, my, uh, my exercise, my steps. And then you can share these with social networks. You have all this positive reinforcement that comes through social networks we never had. 
Now, as I kept doing this, I wanted to actually measure how my, in my blood, how was I doing on getting to a better state of health, and I started taking blood tests about five or six years ago, and um, I, once I did that, I found out I could track like a hundred different things in my blood, and I decided to move down this road of quantifying my body, not just understanding it, but quantifying it. It was great. Um, I found out I had really reduced uh, a lot of the bad things that, that I had been inducing from, from fat, and yet I found something, and we'll get back to this in a second, that I hadn't expected. I found that there was inflammation in my body that was five times the upper limit, and then 10 times the upper limit, and then 15 times the upper limit, and by the last New Year's, I was at 30 times the upper limit, and I couldn't figure this out. What's going on? And as I read about this, I started taking stool samples and measuring there, and I found out I must have a chronic disease. And to find out what that was about, I took my, I went, had an MRI in the hospital, but then I said, look, my body generated that data. Give me the data. And I took it back to our institute, and we have people that write uh, free software that can take that data and turn your body into a video game. You can actually fly through your body, and in the salon later, we'll do that. I brought over some, uh, some TVs that so we can look at 3D, and uh, we're actually go in and find uh, what, uh, what each of your organs is like and so forth. And what I found is that in just my large intestine, about six inches of it uh, was inflamed. And that was because of an autoimmune disease called Crohn's. And it's very rare that people my age get it, 5%, but it was there. And then I thought, well, okay, I want to get to know that organ. And guess what? You can 3D print. As you'll hear today, it's a whole new technology. You're going to live with 3D printing. We only had 2D printing. Color was a big deal for us. Okay? And this guy sits right here. This is the descending colon. And this part right here, this is what was ruining my body. This is the source that as I have it now in my hand. That makes a huge psychological difference. But you know what I found out is that why do you have an autoimmune disease? And it's because we're only, we've only been looking at a small part of our body. So do you know that you, know, you hear about bacteria? Every bacteria is bad, right? I mean, you have antibacterial soap, everything. No, no, no. A very, very few bacteria can make you sick. But most of these bacteria that are in your body, 10 times as many microbes as you have human cells are doing you all kinds of good things. When you eat a salad, you don't have a human cell that actually, in its DNA, can make an enzyme that can digest that cellulose. That comes from the microbes. They're doing that service for you. They're also training your immune system when you're a baby. And yet, they have a hundred times as many genes as your human DNA. And so, you are a superorganism. You actually are made of, far, of an ecology. You're, you, you have a hundred species of microbes in you that are a critical part of your health, or if they go wrong, disease. And yet all of medicine to this point has only focused on the 10% of cells and the 1% of human genes. So we're having a revolution coming. And it's because the gene sequencing is now a million times cheaper than it was when I came to San Diego in 2000. That's the reason I can actually work with the Craig Venter Institute. I can sequence, send them a stool sample, they sequence all my microbes, I get back a hard disk with a 35 gigabyte file on it. I use a supercomputer to actually analyze these, and I can literally find out how many of each of these microbes there are, and I can compare myself with healthy people. Now, this is not something you should try at home yet, <laughs> but it will be routine before you're graduating from college. And so there's this whole new world coming that is going to treat the true superorganism. When you eat, remember, you're eating for 11 one human cell and 10 microbes. So think about that. We have to not only 
tune our diet to our humanness. We have to tune it to microbes. And you think, well, is that weird? Well, think about what nature did. Mother's milk, about half of that, the substance in that milk is to feed the microbes in the developing gut system of the baby. And that, those microbes, in turn, are training the young immune system. Now, since we didn't know about this, there's all kinds of things we've done, like antibiotics, overuse of antibiotics, you wipe out everything, the good bacteria as well as the bad. Autoimmune diseases are at the boundary of the interaction of the microbes and your human immune system. And so we've got a lot of things to rethink. Now, why is this possible in your time? You are living at the only time in human history in your next five to 10 years in which this ongoing exponential decrease in the cost of digital technology is going to transform healthcare, it's going to transform medicine, it's going to give you the tools you need to be the CEO of your own body. You can tune it to exactly the way you want it to be. You can share that with your friends. So this is the new world you are going in. Now I'm an old guy. It's almost too late for me. But if we're going to have a future, is it going to be that that map just keeps getting worse? Is the CDC right? that we're gonna end up with, by the time you're 30, a third of our population with type two diabetes? Or are you gonna become the architects of your own body? Are you gonna think, turn brain on, and look inward, and find out what you need? What's your user manual? What do you put in the oil tank? What do you put in the gas tank, your own body? And every time that you take a drink, Every time that you take a bite, you are constructing your body and its future. That choice is up to you. So feed your mind, arm yourself with knowledge, understand you're in a war zone in which you're surrounded by lies. People are trying to get you to do things that you shouldn't do because they're making money. Fight it, think, and create the kind of beautiful bodies that all of you are capable of doing. Thank you. Thank you.